Hey there, fellow van builders. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jason, the van teacher. In today's lesson, we're covering how to add DC to DC alternator charging to your van's electrical system. But before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. It's the best way to stay updated with all of my latest videos. This video will cover the equipment, wires, fuses, and parts you will need, how to connect to your starter battery, how to select and connect to your DC to DC charge controller, and how to connect the charge controller to your battery bank. Let's get right to it. The alternator in your van converts mechanical energy to electrical energy, which is used to maintain your starter battery and provide the power needed to run the electronics in your van. You can tap into this system by connecting to your starter battery and running the wire to a charge controller connected to your van's battery bank. The charge controller's job is to regulate the voltage going to your batteries, protect the alternator from overload, and to keep your starter battery voltage from getting too low during the charging process. The first step in installing this system is to locate a suitable location to connect to your van's starter battery. You can connect directly to the battery's positive and negative terminals, or you can connect to an upfitter power source that leads back to the battery. In the Ram ProMaster, the upfitter connection can be found in the B pillar on the passenger side. I connected directly to the battery because it is closer to the house battery and there is an empty terminal on the terminal bus bar. As you can see here, I simply added a 60 amp fuse and a bolt that gives me a place to attach the fuse and wire lug. The bolt needs to have a square head and I used a 1 half inch 5 16 inch bolt that I had to cut shorter to fit under the terminal cover. This is an ideal spot for the fuse as it is as close to the battery as possible. An inline fuse would be needed if you do not fuse your connection at the battery. When determining the fuse and wire size for the wire feeding the controller, Victron recommends a 60 amp fuse and a 6 gauge wire for runs longer than 6 feet. The negative cable is also 6 gauge and also connects directly to the negative terminal bus bar. I then routed these wires under the flooring, under the seat, and along the driver's side wall. I protected the wires anywhere they might come into contact with metal edges and used zip ties to help keep them in place. For my system, I used the Victron Orion Isolated 121230 controller. This controller is for 12 volt systems and can charge at a rate of up to 30 amps. Because the ProMaster alternator is rated at 180 amps, this controller will at most only pull 30 amps from the alternator. For those of you who need more power, Victron just released a new DC to DC charger called the Orion XS121250. Not only does it charge at 50 amps, it has much improved operating efficiency and improved monitoring and control features. I use barrels to connect the positive and negative six gauge wires from the starter battery to the input side of the charge controller. The six gauge output wires from the controller heading to the Lynx distributor are terminated with ferrules on the controller side and 5 16 inch lugs at the Lynx distributor. Fuse size at the Lynx distributor can be calculated by multiplying the amperage of the controller by 1.2, which equals 36 amps. Using six gauge wire at this connection, results in a recommended fuse size between 40 and 60 amps. I chose to use a 60 amp fuse as seen here. The Lynx distributor is then connected to the batteries using 4 aught wire with a 200 amp fuse in line with the positive cable as close to the batteries as possible. 
Both the positive and negative cables between the links and the batteries need to be the same length, including the length of the monitoring shunt on the negative cable and the shutoff switch on the positive. I measured this length from the negative terminal on battery 2 to the links negative terminal and from the positive terminal on battery 1 to the links positive terminal. Now that all connections have been made, test your system visually by following the wires to make sure positives are connected to positives and negatives are connected to the negatives. To test your system with a voltmeter, first turn on the battery switch and use a voltmeter to check for proper connections between the battery and the charge controller. Test at the positive and negative output terminals on the DC to DC charge controller you should get a reading of between 11 to 14.6 volts. Next, turn on the engine and check the voltage at the charge controller inputs. This should be the output voltage from your alternator. Finally, check your monitoring system to see that everything is operating correctly. Follow the controller's directions to properly set cutoff voltages and charging rates. Now sit back and enjoy your work. Congratulations on installing a safe, reliable, and efficient DC to DC alternator charging system. If you would like additional information on van electrical systems, check out my camper van electrical overview video, or for more detailed tutorials, check out my videos on installing shore power, solar power, quick electrical tips, and a complete guide to DC circuit wiring. If you would like to know how much my electrical system cost, or any other budget-related items, check out my video on how much our 2023 Ram ProMaster costs to build. Also, check out the links in the description below for more information on any of the items mentioned in this video. And if you found this video helpful, hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below.